In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has a way. We believe the Bible is a revelation of his way. We invite you to join us for In Search of the Lord's Way with Mac Lyon. My friend, we welcome you to a program devoted to the study of the Bible, In Search of the Lord's Way. We believe the Bible is the revelation of God's will for the family of man. So ours is not a study of philosophy or psychology or church dogma or private revelations and experiences, just a message from the Word of God itself. We're finding a lot of people are eager to be a part of such a program, and we pray you too will be blessed by it. Thanks for joining us today. Of course, uh, you already know that the word gospel literally means good news, glad tidings, good message. If it could be, apply, it could be applied to any message of that nature, like uh, an announcement of the birth of a baby or a job promotion or an admission to an honor society. But we use it almost exclusively with reference to religion, and, and not just any religion either, but only the religion of Christ. Meaning then that the message of Jesus Christ is truly good news. That's the gospel. The word appears 101 times in the New Testament. 59 times it appears simply as the gospel. 12 times it's the gospel of Christ. Seven times it's the gospel of God. Six times Paul speaks of my or our gospel. And Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 4.23. Romans 10.15, Paul spoke of it as the gospel of peace. He also called it the gospel of the grace of God in Acts 20, 24. That doesn't mean that these are all different gospels or different good news messages, but each of them is a focus on some special aspect of the good news message of Christ revealed in the Word. Today, we'll be examining the thought found in Ephesians 1, 13, the gospel of our salvation. We'd like to hear from you this week that you are here and that you were profited by the program our address is In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083. By email is searchtv at aol.com. Or you may use our toll-free telephone number and call us. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We'll be back for Bible reading and prayer after Ken Heltebrand leads us in singing. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, the Apostle Paul says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then he enumerates a lot of them, and we're going to jump down here to verse 13 and notice one in particular. He says, in whom, that would be in Christ, you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And from that passage, we will take our text and we will study today. Let us bow now for prayer. Holy Father, we're so grateful for the revelation of the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ is to us. 
And we pray that as we study these thoughts that are here in these verses today, that we'll be strengthened in our great faith in Thee, and that we can be strong Christians and with great faith. Maybe others will be led to Thee as well. This is our prayer through Christ. Amen. gospel of your salvation. That's the message of the New Testament, and it's our message today. As we've already said, gospel means good news. Salvation means deliverance from and protection from something. What do you suppose it is in this case? Sometimes the words are used in the scripture to denote a material or temporal deliverance. For example, it's used that way with reference to the del uh, deliverance of national Israel in Luke chapter 1, verses 69 through 71. And on the birth of John the Baptist, his father Zacharias declared that God has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Well, that kind of physical salvation can also be personal, as in the case of the apostle Paul, when in his letter to the great church at Philippi, in chapter 1, verse 19, he expressed confidence of his deliverance, his salvation, from the Roman prison. But generally speaking, the salvation mentioned in the New Testament is a spiritual deliverance from the guilt and the wages of sin. It's forgiveness of all past sin and the hope of that salvation or deliverance that will be revealed in the last time, 1 Peter 1, verse 5. That's the gospel of your salvation and that's our text today. In the beginning, we must take notice that the gospel of your salvation is equivalent to the word of truth. In fact, uh, the text from which we read a few moments ago says that, in whom, that is in Christ, you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So salvation is not in just any message but it's the biblical message. Another passage binds the two thoughts, the gospel of your salvation and the word of truth together even more securely. It's in Paul's great sermon in Antioch of Pisidia in Acts 13, 26. Men and brethren, he said, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you fears God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. The Holy Spirit also said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, All flesh is as grass, and the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Then the Bible is the word of truth, 
the word of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation is in the Bible. Who then would want to preach any other gospel as some people did in Galatians 1, 6, and 7, and as some people do today? Salvation is in Christ, and it's in none other. Well, the context bears that out. Verse 7 says that it is in Him that we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. And Peter makes it even clearer. Neither is there salvation in any other, he said, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts 4.12. So, without Christ, I'm lost. Salvation from sin is not in any man, be he a prophet or a priest or a pastor. Next, this salvation that's in Christ is not a deliverance from poverty or ill health. The message that comes through in so much of today's evangelistic preaching is one of wealth and health. We're told if we're children of God, we're going to be wealthy because God wants all his children to go first class, and we are told that he promises wealth if we'll be Christians. Well, if that were true, it would necessarily follow that poor people are not children of God. My friend, God does not measure a person's worth by his financial statement. He doesn't put a premium on poverty, as many have done in the past. Neither does he place a priority on wealth, as modern evangelists often do today. Christ didn't come from the heavenly abode at God's right hand to die on the cross to deliver us from poverty. Don't be taken in by that falsehood. And the good news of your salvation is not a message of deliverance from sickness and disease. But maybe you're thinking, well, didn't Christ heal the sick? Oh, yes, he did. But that, that isn't the good news about him. As good as that may sound, and as appealing as it is, especially when you're ill, that is not what brought him into a world of sin and suffering to die as he did. His was a mission far more noble and grand and worthy and holy and profound and significant and consequential and vital than that, my friend. The Holy Spirit says it more clearly than any way I know. This is a faithful saying, he says, worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15 The salvation that we're talking about is deliverance from the guilt and the wages of sin. That is good news. There are cures for illnesses, and that's good news, and there are other solutions to the problem of poverty, and that's good news but there's no one but Christ to deliver man from sin and death. And Paul reminded the Christians in Corinth of his ministry among them, and he said to them, Move for brethren. That's in his first letter, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's the heart of the gospel, my friend. So it's no marvel what he said in chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. When I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. None of the world's wisdom, personal charisma, eloquence, or oratory for Paul, but the death of Christ for our sins, his burial, and his resurrection. Thus, the good news message of your salvation has universal interest and appeal. It meets a universal need. The Holy Spirit says, all are under
under sin, Romans 3, 9. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 22. Has been one man centered into the world, sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Romans 5 and 12. There's no nation or race or people on earth who has escaped the scourge and the curse of sin to whom that good message is not applicable. There's no place on this globe where this program is being heard or seen where this message is without meaning. Accordingly, when Jesus Christ had proved himself to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Romans 1, 4, he commissioned his disciples, saying, All power or authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28, 18, 20. Christ is the only answer to the universal problem of sin. This good message of your salvation also has a very personal appeal, not only universal but personal, because it's the only adequate answer to each person's problem with sin. A moment ago we mentioned Romans 5.12, which says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so then death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see, you and I don't sin because we're sinners. We're sinners because we sin. Sin was introduced into the world by the sin of Adam, and death by sin, but death has passed upon you and me because we have sinned. 1 John 3 and 4 by, says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. It isn't a disease you inherit. God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament and said, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall not die. Say, that's good news. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him again. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all, saith the Lord, that the wicked should die? and that he should and not return from his ways and live. Ezekiel 18, verses 20, 24. What great news that is, that regardless of the magnitude or the multitude of your sins, in spite of the enormity of your sin, be it murder or slander or adultery or lying or thievery or whatever it is, and in spite of the multitude of your sins, God has given you the opportunity to turn from them and receive complete and total pardon, forgiveness, deliverance, or salvation from the guilt and punishment of them, and you can live with him here and in eternity. That, my friend, is the good news of your salvation in Christ. And there's not a person anywhere on this earth today where this message is being heard that can't rejoice in that good news. God didn't make such salvation as that available to the angels who sinned, but he cast them down to hell, that is Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto the judgment with absolutely no hope of salvation or deliverance. 2 Peter 2, 4. Are your sins and my sins less grievous to God than the sins of the angels? Or are you and I more worthy of salvation than the angels? No. The answer is no to both questions. Then why does God give you and me another chance? But he doesn't do it for the angels. Why does he offer us pardon when he does not do that for the angels that sinned? Well, there's only one word for it. It's grace. It's his unmerited, unearned favor toward us. 
When the Apostle Peter had shown these truths to some of the people who were in on the dastardly crime of crucifying Christ, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2.37. Perhaps you're asking the same question today. Well, Peter replied, and here's your answer too. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of the forgiveness of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's God's answer to you, my friend, and to me, and to everyone else. There's no substitute. Repentance is a change of a person's mind or thinking that always results in a change of his life or behavior. And baptism is a reliving of the humiliation of the death of Christ, his burial, his resurrection. And such humiliation, such surrender, such obedience as was shown when the thousands of people, those people who less than three months earlier had cried out to Pilate, let him be crucified, let him be crucified, they were baptized in his very name. God forbid that any should ever want or try to come to Christ but bypass or circumvent the baptismal experience. In that, in baptism, we reach the blood of Jesus, the only element that is capable of washing away sin. No, the water of baptism does not wash away sin. Sins are washed away with the blood of Christ when a person is baptized into his death, Romans 6, 3 and 4, Acts 22, 16. That's the gospel of your salvation. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful message like this. Thank you for salvation which you provided for us in Jesus. May there be those who are hearing this message today who receive it gladly like those on Pentecost. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, good me, love lifted me. The great, universal, and very personal invitation of Jesus still echoes around the world. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he pleads. He promises, I will give you rest. Millions of people all around the world are hindered with the addiction to sin, burdened with the guilt of sin, laden with the fear of punishment for sin, who need to accept that blessed invitation and find rest and hope and strength for their souls to be delivered and to enjoy life to the fullest in Christ. I sincerely pray that you will accept his invitation today. Tomorrow is not in the gospel message of salvation. Tomorrow is in the, de uh, is the devil's agenda. Tomorrow is only on the fool's calendar. Tomorrow is not a reality, it's only a mirage. Don't count too much on tomorrow. We'd like very much to assist you in your obedience to the gospel of your salvation. 
if we may ask someone from the church and your community to come by and study with you more about it, we'd surely love to hear from you this week. Our program is presented on a purely voluntary basis by your friends and neighbors and school teachers and firemen and policemen and other good citizens of your community who are members of Churches of Christ. They're the reason why you haven't heard us asking you to send money. We'd delight in having you to worship with us, though, at your very next opportunity. And if we may ask somebody from the church in your community to come by and study with you, we'd like to hear from you this week. We're not trying to be the biggest or the best denomination in town. We're, not trying, not, we're trying not to even be a denomination. We're simply trying to be the church that you read about in your New Testament. And we're trying to duplicate New Testament Christianity in the lives of men and women in our present day. We believe that kind of Christianity that you read about in your New Testament is just as desirable and just as possible as it was when Jesus introduced it and the apostles preached it in the first century. As a matter of fact, we believe anything different from that would not be Christianity at all. If that strikes you as important and possible, do let us send someone by to visit with you. Or perhaps you'd like to study the Bible systematically in the privacy of your own home by way of a Bible correspondence course. Ours is free to you. You need only to send us your request and mailing address, and we'll send you the lessons, one and two. And then you complete lesson one, return it to us in the envelope provided. And while we are grading lesson one, you'll be working on lesson two, and we'll mail you lesson three with lesson one when we've graded it. A free audio cassette tape and our printed copy of today's program titled the Gospel of Your Salvation is available free upon request. Simply write us and ask either for the tape or the transcript. Be sure to say what you prefer now. Our address, In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083, or by email at searchtv@aol.com. And our toll-free telephone number is 1-800-321-8633. You might want to visit our website, too, at www.searchtv.org. And uh, you'll find our publication, The Searchlight, and other information there. I hope you'll be blessed. I hope you were blessed today by our study of the Word of the Lord together on the subject of your great message of salvation, the good news of your salvation. Be with us again next week, will you? God bless you. We love you. Here I was.